Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 31st, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery of British Columbia, Washington, Oregon. You can see the system that moved through a couple of days ago, but in the wake of this system, we're going to develop a ridge of high pressure here across the Intermountain West. It's going to allow things to warm up along the West Coast all the way up into the Pacific Northwest, and we're also going to bring some monsoon moisture with the return of that on the western periphery. That ridge will ride back up into Oregon and Washington, and this has the potential to create some lightning activity and of course, then the fire threat will be ramped up as we go through the weekend coming up. So we'll dive into those details. There's also a little bit of a system I want to talk about that may be coming through next week. We're going to look at that as well. So let's just go ahead and dive into things and get started. Taking a look at the marine layer, you can see it into a western British Columbia, western Washington, a little bit lesser coverage across the Willamette Valley. You can see it punching into those individual valleys there along the Oregon coastal range. Always fun to watch that. And you can see the Olympic Mountains and some of the higher portions of Vancouver Island are above that marine layer this morning. Mount Rainier is actually nice and clear right now. Smoke coverage definitely less across Washington versus Oregon. You can see pretty extensive coverage here. We'll take a look at what the weather models have to say about that and where that is going to move here over the next few days. Now, if I click on an individual location here on this weather flow map, this is the weather station I've been talking about for the last year or so. We'll go ahead and click right there. And then you can see this little icon pop up here. But it also builds this forecast for your individual location. It tells you the UV index and the temperature and the humidity and the pressure and all that good stuff. You can see the low clouds burning off by the time you get towards 1 p.m. If I click on that icon there, then you get to see the individual parameters. You can click on anything on here, like the temperature, and you can scroll back and forth. Strolls out the data for you in the cloud, and you can see your temperature as we go through the days here. And you can kind of see how things were suppressed as we went through the day Monday here when we had the system rolling over the top of it. So, yeah, very fun weather station. It's got a lightning detection system with it as well. Well, and if you click on that link down below, you save 10% off on it. So here is one way to look at wildfire smoke. And you can see it, it may be underdoing the coverage there across Oregon. But the main point I want to show you here is this, this ridge of high pressure. We're going to steer some of the smoke across California, Oregon, back up across Washington, B.C., and some of Idaho as we go through the weekend coming up here. You can see western Washington doesn't get too much, but uh, the smoke looks like it's going to be increasing as we go through the weekend for places like eastern Washington. So pointing that out, we look at the high resolution rapid refresh, which obviously is underdoing some of the extent of the smoke coverage here across eastern Oregon. Put this into motion. And again, you'll kind of see how this approaches from the south up across Oregon and then into Washington as we start to bring that monsoonal flow back into the region, lightning potential. It's also going to spread some smoke northbound as well. Might get some interesting sunsets and you'll just, you know, some areas are going to be able to smell the smoke probably east of the Cascades, easier than the west. Now, if we look at the thunderstorm potential here, they're not calling too much attention to across Washington, Oregon just yet. But I'll show you more on that here in a moment. But you can see there's day one. Here we go, day two and day three. You can see to see it creeping up across California, but this is probably going to be moving into Oregon at this time. It's probably going to get an upgrade here over the next day or so. So this is looking at dry thunderstorm potential. You can do see that this is moved into Oregon here. So it does include Medford right on the heels of Eugene up across the Cascades, and it does include Spokane, Missoula here as well. And this is probably going to include some of the Washington Cascades as we go through Friday and Saturday also. So we'll be watching that one. I'll show you the weather models on that here in a moment. And again, there's one more look at that. And the heat also is going to be making a return here. Look at the high temperature on Friday, the Tri Cities, a scalding 106, Walla Walla, Troy 107. You can see John Day at 105. Look at Warm Springs 106 as well. So we're definitely going to be warming back up. And you have not been dreaming it. We've been quite a bit above average here for some places in the Pacific Northwest. And I'll show you some data on that here in a moment. But you can see this is for Missoula, Montana. The temperature is really ramping up. Look at Missoula 102 by Saturday, Libya at 105, Eureka 103 here. You can see Butte even get into the lower 90s as well so yeah definitely gonna be ramping up the heat this is eastern washington look at lewiston idaho as well 108 moses lake look at ritzville 107 on friday very warm indeed spokane 104 now this is the temperature departure from average so you know sometimes i get some comments like yeah it's summer it gets hot but Summer is already hot. These temperatures are in excess of that. So this is very noteworthy. There's a lot of Oregon, as you can see, has been four to six degrees above average and already very warm you know, during the summertime. So you add that on top of it. And you can see a lot of Washington has been above average, some of it substantially so. So this is the last 60 days as well. This is not just a, a cherry picked week. This is a 60 day running uh, average here. So yeah, it's been very warm. You're not imagining it. 
Now, taking a look at what is coming up here, the, this is looking at 500 millibar heights and uh, the moisture at 18,000 feet as well. So if we put this into motion, there goes that frontal system here. Then you can see the ridge building. You can see the black line showing that ridge building here, strong ridge across the Four Corners area, extending off into the Pacific Northwest. There goes that monsoon moisture. You can't miss it. Riding up across Nevada, California, into Oregon, and then to Washington as we go through Friday night and on in through Saturday and eventually on in through Sunday here. So more on this here in a moment. We've got, we got some extended stuff we're going to be looking at as well. But we're going to be returning that monsoon moisture and with it lightning strikes and some of those could be dry thunderstorms and be prolific fire producers as well. Now if we take a look at the GFS, it's a 24-hour precipitation running total. So you'll see that precipitation start to creep up across California as we go through Friday here. Now we move into Saturday and you see some of this moving across the Cascades. And again, this would be thunderstorm activity most likely as we go on in towards Sunday. You see some of that activity Sunday morning stretching across the Washington Cascades as well. Now then it moves up into BC. Watch what happens as we go through the day Monday. You can kind of see some precipitation coming across maybe the Portland area, some of the Oregon coast, western Washington, even targeting some of the Puget Sound. Don't want to get too excited about that just yet, but some of the models are showing a little bit of a wave moving up here that could tr trigger some convection here even west of the Cascades as we go through the day Monday. No promises just yet, but it's something we're going to be watching, and that's why you watch this channel is because I like to sniff out these little events here before anyone else does. So we're going to look at that here a bit more in a moment. We'll see the what the European says on this lightning potential first. Here we go as we go on in through Thursday and you can see some of this activity moving across California up into the Oregon Cascades Thursday afternoon. European likes to show a little bit of lightning here across some of the Cascades all the way up into Washington. We go into Friday here yet again and you can see that lightning potential there. We're not looking at thunderstorm potential for Seattle right now. A little bit lesser chance but you could get something out over some of the lower elevations for West Oregon. Still unsure about that right now. And we go on in through Saturday. You'll see some of that activity again here across the region as well. Now, if we scroll on a bit more, some of the, the European was actually showing a little bit of that convection starting to ride up as we go through Tuesday morning with that wave. But it's not showing too much west of the Cascades just yet. But I'm going to show you the upper levels where we can get a better picture of that starting right now. This is yesterday afternoon's European on the left versus the GFS on the right. And of course, the large scale picture is the ridge dominating the west here, spreading this monsoon moisture. Good model agreement between the European and the GFS. The European, of course, keeps this out of western Washington. Then you can kind of set right up across the area as we go through Sunday. But this little feature here is what we're watching as we go on in through the day Monday. You can see. The GFS a little bit stronger with this low, and you can see it spread some moisture back up across the region there, and that's what could cause a little bit of scent in the upper levels of the atmosphere. You could get some rain across the Puget Sound. The European is weaker and farther west with that feature, though, and it might be more difficult if what the European shows to trigger some precipitation west of the Cascades. I'll just a little bit here as you go through Tuesday morning, but that's a feature we're going to be watching there over the next couple of days. And this is the driest time of the year. I've been pointing this out the last few days. This might be the last day I show up. But right here at the end of July is the driest time of the year for the Pacific Northwest. And you can see the gradual climb as we go through August. And we start to pick things up as we go through September and October. Then peak here in November and maintain pretty wet conditions as we go all the way on in through March. Now, looking at the North American model here, the 12Z run, we'll see if it agrees with the European. You can clearly see the ridge develop and you can see some of the vorticity uh, move up across Oregon and Washington as well. And that would be that monsoon moisture as we go through about Saturday afternoon. The uh, North American 12 kilometer model goes at about 84 hours. This is looking at the same uh, model here, but it kind of gives you a better picture of the ridge. You got some colors, very strong ridge across the four corners there. And of course that extends up into the Pacific Northwest. And you can see how as we're going through the weekend here, as I scroll backwards, you can see that southeasterly flow. And that's what steers that monsoon moisture back up across us. So taking a look at the North American uh, model as well, this is a high resolution version of a three kilometer. And if I put this into motion here, you can also see the high resolution models are catching on to some of that activity as we go through the day Friday, starting to spread up here. It only goes out 60 hours, but you get the general gist of what is going on. Now, taking a look at the European, this is last night's run. I also want to show you, you can see that frontal system and the cooler air aloft at about 10,000 feet associated with it. We scroll off in towards Thursday and you can really see things warm up across the Intermountain West. And that is that ridge taking hold here. Look at Friday afternoon, some very warm conditions. And again, this is at 10,000 feet. So yeah, you can kind of see the upper levels of the atmosphere starting to warm up. 
uh, taking a look at the control run of the European. This is last night's. Here goes the system there in the ridge, definitely building here across the West Coast and kind of maintaining for a bit as we go on and through the weekend. Then we get another strong ridge. It looks like it's going to develop up across some of the Yukon Northwest Territory, some of Southeast Alaska here, which would, have keep, which would, of course, keep the onshore flow from being very strong across portions of the Pacific Northwest, which would allow us to remain above average as we go through next week. We'll be watching that as well. Taking a look at the National Blend of Models, here we go for today. We're starting to warm things back up. Then we get downright toasty here as we go through Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And remain so. As you saw, we don't have much of an onshore flow signal coming on here. It might be slightly onshore, but you know nothing that would cool us down dramatically. So this is looking at the daily max 2-meter temperature. This shows British Columbia and some Alberta pretty well. There's Washington. This would be for today, Wednesday the 31st. You can see temperatures ramp up. I mean, look at this. You're looking at upper 90s, perhaps some 100 degree readings here for some of the Willamette Valley, Eastern Washington valleys all the way up into British Columbia warming up quite nicely. There's August 2nd, almost 90 for Seattle, 94 for Portland. So yeah, and you can see the 108s there showing up, maybe 107 for the Tri-Cities and very warm condition. We go through Saturday. We do drop temperatures off a bit, but we stay warm west of the Cascades. You see all the way up into British Columbia, the valley areas especially, quite warm. Look at that 91 degree reading on Vancouver Island also. And then you go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're not getting much relief here. So we are definitely going to be dealing with some summer-like weather as we go through the early portion of August, no doubt. Six to 10 day reflects that as well. Above average signal right there, square on Eastern Oregon. And this is that below normal signal here in the six to 10 day, but you know, Know, take that with a grain of salt. We'll be watching this and breaking it down and getting a better idea what comes with that. Let's see if this is updated yet for today. It has not, but you can clearly see the lightning potential as we go through Saturday and Sunday. And some of this could be those dry thunderstorms here across mainly NW4, 7, 6, you know, 12, 11, and I think it has it up through 8 as well. But this could uh, come across some of the North Cascades of Washington also. Then, of course, we'll watch that next system as we go through the early portion of the week to see if that has any thunderstorm threat with it. We'll be breaking that down day by day. The Palmer Drought Index also shows that we are in some moderate drought for the Cascades and even some of the coastal areas of Washington and some severe for some places where a lot of wheat growing goes on across southeast Washington into Idaho, northeast Oregon, Idaho Panhandle into western Montana and the hydrological conditions are something similar here, even includes some of the Puget Sound there. So yeah, it's not just the drought monitor, also the Palmer drought index showing something similar. So anyway, yeah, we'll continue to break things down day by day. You know, I'll be out and about this weekend, see if I'll probably be shooting some Blue Angel stuff and maybe try to make another video as I have for the last couple of years as well. And also, yeah, if you want to buy one of those weather stations, it's always much more fun to watch the weather when you've got one attached to your place of residence. Um, but otherwise, hope you guys are having a good day. Click that like and subscribe button down below. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.